while since I've done a Q&A and I thought it would be a nice switch up from the makeup to just answer some questions about what's going on, my life, all of that good stuff. You guys came up with some good questions as well. I asked on Instagram literally 10 minutes ago. Early bird gets the worm baby. We're just answering the first questions out of the bag. <laughs> One thing I've learned from doing these videos though is that I am terrible at doing makeup while talking about something different than what I'm actually doing on my face. So I wanted to go with a very simple, clean, like the clean girl aesthetic, minimal look. Today's video is very kindly sponsored by Merit and I just feel like they are the perfect brand for me to get that quick, simple look while answering these questions because their products are so quick and easy to use. So I'm going to be using Merit products all for today's video to see if we can use, how many products do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six only eight products to see what we can do with the whole face i first heard of merit because it was being sold at sephora and i have been eyeing up and down the merit display at my local sephora so i'm excited to show you guys the products i've played with a lot of these already so if you are interested in checking out merit i will have the link down below to shop now for every first purchase it's going to come with a cute little bag and it ships three with every first order so literally this is so cute for fall and then you just open it up and then it holds a lot of makeup products obviously you don't need to just put makeup in it but i just think it is so cute so you get that free with every first order and then there's free shipping on all orders over 40 dollars and free returns we like that so i'll talk about the products as we apply them thank you merit for sponsoring today's video let's go ahead and get into the questions i'm starting off with the merit the minimalist Perfecting Complexion Stick in the shade Ochre. And I'm gonna do that to correct the red areas around my face. And I'm gonna try and blend that out with this brush right here from Merit as well. So the first question out the bat is one <laughs> that I love. <gasps> Top three picks from Trader Joe's. <sighs> Okay, so one, the sea salt brownies. I've only bought them once and they were super red flag for me, meaning I had to never buy them again because I will eat the whole thing in one sitting. But they are so good. They have that sweet salty combination. Oh, by the way, do you see how creamy this is? Lovely. Oh, this is so creamy. I really like this for just like a quick coverage on the skin. The chicken shumai. I really like the pork shumai as well. This is from the frozen section, but get the chicken if you want to be healthier because it literally has like half the fat of the pork. I mean, the pork tastes better, but for some reason the pork is just so much more bad for you. So we get the chicken shumai and I really like the rice dolmas. Those are really good cheap. They come in a can. They're in the canned good sections. I Sometimes I'll eat a whole can just for lunch. Sometimes I'll just snack on a can throughout the week, depending. Uh, but I love getting those. So, yeah. There's more than I love. Like, are those really my top three? Those are just three of the things that I get every time I go. Chicken shumai. Well, not the brownies. But I would if I could. Also, you know what I've tried recently? The pumpkin cream cheese. Ugh, I'm a bagel and cream cheese kind of girl. And the pumpkin cream cheese was a hit for me. I really like their ice cream flavors as well. I just, I live a lot closer now to a Trader Joe's than I did when I lived in Maryland. <laughs> so I go all the time now. Great question. Ooh, I like this brush. It's blending out nice and soft. And you can kind of use this foundation stick for anything, any kind of coverage. I'm going to keep it towards the center of my face and then blend it out over some more red areas. Next question is, do you plan to live in Spain at some point? Yes, we definitely do, but the question is when, and I don't think it's gonna be anytime soon because for my job personally, it's easier for me to be in the US. I have a US based audience. The US gets makeup first. <laughs> so for a while, at least we're staying here. I mean, we're talking moving maybe for retirement, maybe in 10 years after we have kids that are ready to start going to school. It is in the long term plan, but not the short term plan. We definitely are not moving anytime soon, but definitely later in our adult life, we do plan on it, maybe buying a property there and then living in. In US part-time, Spain part-time. It just depends, but 
Long term, yes, we just don't know the specifics right now, obviously, because we still are young and we still have so much to do here in the US. And I'm definitely not ready to leave the country yet and be away from my parents. So in the long term, yes, there's a lot of benefits to moving to Spain for us, but not right now. I'm gonna quickly bronze using the bronze balm in the shade clay. I believe this is their newest product. So I'm excited about this. Merit packaging is so luxe. Which holiday launch are you most eager to see? Okay, I mean, I'm always the most eager for the Hourglass palettes, but those already launched. I already have my review on them, but I am anxiously awaiting this is an answer you probably already knew. To see Pat McGrath's collection, she usually comes out with something pretty big. A big palette came out last year. The year before, she came out with a lot of little palettes. Oh, I have a zit. I need to cover right here. So I'm anxious to see that. I'm anxious to see, of course, what Charlotte Tilbury has in store. I want a new eyeshadow palette from her. A new big one, Natasha Denona. I mean, my main brands I'm excited to see, but probably Pat McGrath is what I'm most excited about now that we have the Hourglass, because the Hourglass is what I was most excited about. But Pat McGrath normally does something really big for the holiday time, so that's why I'm really excited. This is blending out super easy, and I do really like this brush. It's working well with all of the Merit products. Ooh, I love this question. I've never answered anything like this on my channel. How do you know you are not overspending? Like, how do you budget? And I'm sure people assume I'm literally crazy because of how much makeup I buy. So I'm actually pretty proud of my budgeting, you guys. So one thing you need to keep in mind, obviously I spend a bajillion times more on makeup than a person needs to, but that money never comes from my own personal account. I have a business account, and that is the money that I use to buy beauty products. I'm using the Flush Balm Cheek Color in the shade Beverly Hills next. It's a pretty color. This is pretty sheer, but it's perfect because I have such light coverage on right now, so it looks super natural. So any payment that comes in goes through a process with me. I put all of the money into my business bank account, okay? This is how I've been doing the split recently. It's been working out well for me, though I'm gonna have to adjust it for the holiday season. But basically, 40% of the money will never see my personal bank account. So every time I make money, I know only 60% of it is gonna actually go towards my personal account, my personal expenses. So 60% I will send to my personal account. 30% of that paycheck I will put in my savings for taxes. It's not my money. A whole 30% of all the money you make does not belong to me. And when you're self-employed and you don't get W-2s, that's how you got to do it. You got to pull your own money out to save up for taxes. So 30% goes towards taxes. And then I keep about 10% for my channel budget, for buying makeup, for getting my nails done. Anything having to do with business expenses is what about 10% goes into. Now, the 10% is what I've been doing recently. I'm going to have to up it to like 15, 20% over the holiday season since there's so many sales and so much makeup comes out. Recently, 10% of my paycheck has been working out for me and what I spend on my channel. So I would say I have a loose budget for how much I spend on my channel. It's about $1,000 to 1500 and nobody should ever spend that on beauty. But keep in mind, it's not just beauty going into that. Like I said, my nails are part of that budget. When my husband's at work and has the car, if I have to take Ubers to pick up a product to review, that counts towards my business expenses when I send out any packages packages that goes towards my business expenses. So I would say I pull about $1,500 out of my business account with makeup and all of the other business expenses, which is not bad because Morgan Turner Makeup LLC is a business under the eyes of the government. And for a legitimate business, $1,500 in expenses is really, really good. <laughs> but again, it changes every month. Sometimes I spend literally under $1,000, but I would say on average, in terms of how much I spend on makeup, it's about thousand dollars but the, it really varies on the time of year next I'm using the daylight glow highlighter balm in the shade citrine and I am looking dewy glossy delicious already we'll just put this on the high points of my face oh that's nice I haven't tried this one yet that's pretty 
And then in terms of my personal expenses, like I said, 60% goes to my personal account. Jose and I are saving up to buy a place. So I try and save a certain amount in our savings account every month. With being self-employed, you never actually really know exactly how much is coming in and when. So that's why I have to look at it as percentages as opposed to putting a certain amount here or there or whatever. However much money I have, I'll put some aside for buying a house, I'll put some for emergency, we'll put some for investments, and then the rest is for rent, bills, food, and fun stuff. And yeah, and it's different every month. How much I save is different every month. How much extra money, fun money we have is different. So <laughs> we, I definitely have to work by uh, percentages for budgeting. I always like to keep a good amount in savings because the money that I get is so inconsistent that if I have that fund to pull into in case I just didn't receive enough money at that time to pay what I needed for the bills. And it's worked out really, really well for us. But I think the big thing for you guys that you'll be curious about is about my budget is, you know, I don't view buying makeup as a personal expense. It's not, it does not come out of my personal bank account at all. The money hits the business account first, and then I divvy it up. It always hurts a little less <laughs> buying makeup than it did before I did this as a job because it is a technical business expense so it never comes out of the money I have to spend on myself. For eyebrows, we're already moving on. I got the face done pretty quickly. I'm going to use the volumizing pomade in the shade brown. Favorite and least favorite thing about your new apartment. So we love our apartment building. I think my least favorite thing is the price. <laughs> Miami, at the time that my husband and I moved here, the market shot up like just at the exact wrong time that we were moving here. So we are paying a lot more than we should be for a one bedroom apartment. And also I don't like that it's a one bedroom apartment, but at the time that we moved here, I could not justify paying the price for a two bedroom. So I don't like it that it's a two bedroom, but I love everything else about the apartment. The amenities are great. Miami apartments have the best of entities if you ask me. Side note, do you see how beautiful this is making my brows look? They're looking full without hardly any color. Anyways, this is one of my new favorite brow pomades. Just having to do with the price and having to live in a one bedroom because of that. But my favorite thing is definitely one, we have a really great walkable location. Now that's the number one thing is the location that we lived in. Of course, I'm paying a lot of money to live in a prime location. So of course it's gonna be expensive. That was my choice, but you know, we sacrificed to live in a one bedroom for this first year because I wanted to see what city living was really like and living in a walkable area. And it is my absolute favorite thing right now about living in Miami is the walkability of it all. But she's fancy. I am not happy about that. Do you ever get overwhelmed with the amount of makeup that you have? I don't as long as it's organized. So I will get overwhelmed if I don't have my drawers organized, not everything has a home, or if I get a bunch of like PR packages and you know the stuff is just laying out, that is when I can get overwhelmed. Uh, but generally speaking, no, I love living in a Sephora, you guys. <laughs> I don't buy makeup to use it up. If I felt like I bought makeup to use it up, then yes, I would feel overwhelmed with the amount that I have. But that's just simply not why I buy it. You know, I, I buy it for a job. I buy it to enjoy looking at it, swatching it, having it, having items to compare for you guys. I view makeup differently than the average person. It makes me happy. And as long as everything is in its home and in its drawer, it is not overwhelming to me because I do not remember things. But I can tell you, I know most of the stuff that's in my makeup collection. <laughs> that is one thing that I really do remember. What are some major cultural differences between you and your husband. So if you didn't know, my husband is from Spain, born and bred. He didn't move to the United States until college and he didn't even intend to stay here, but <laughs> he met me and now we're married and now he lives here. One, obviously the language. I mean, he's 100% fluent in English, but sometimes with his accent, I can't understand him. And of course his family speaks Spanish, which is really hard. The eating times of Spain really kill me. In America, we eat dinner so much earlier and he's always trying to eat dinner at like 9 or 10 and I'm like, you're ridiculous. I'm starving. I am going to eat. <laughs> so I know I just use the bronzer and the highlight on the eyelid and that looks really pretty. I'm gonna 
go ahead and use the mascara, which is called the lengthening mascara. I mean, I've noted my husband likes to sit at the restaurants for a really long time, where in America, we're like, go, go, go after you eat. Like, you get the bill and you get out of there. Whereas he's like, no, let's sit. Let's let the food digest. Let's have conversation, which is nice. But I'm like, go, go, go. Let's go. <laughs> I'm just so used to that. And sorry, it looks like it's about to rain and the light is dying, but that's okay. Obviously, there are cultural differences, but Jose and I are so similar. It's crazy. We're not very different <laughs> from one another. And, you know, he doesn't even really eat Spanish food <laughs> and making me Asian food, and he loves Asian food. But there's just, like, little things, you know, in everyday life that he does differently than me, or he feels pacing. Pacing is a big thing. Timing and pacing. He's very slow, never in a rush, all of that. <laughs> Whereas I am the complete opposite. Americans tend to be, especially like ones that are from the city. Not that I'm from the city, but I'm never late and I'm just like trying to get out of people's hair, get things done as quickly as possible. He's not like that. Do you want kids? Yes, we do. I mean, ideally two kids. I don't know. We'll see how we feel. I don't know what it is like to have a child, but right now we're saying two kids, but not for a while. I'm not planning on getting pregnant for a while, and I'm already starting to see people asking me if I'm pregnant. Like, no, if you ask me if I'm pregnant, I'm gonna think you think I'm fat. So don't <laughs> ask me that. I will let you know when that happens, but I can tell you now we are not planning for it to happen for a few years. So yeah, I got asked what are my thoughts on the Night of Creations collections from Kaleidos. I have it, I haven't played with it yet, but I'm going to very soon. I think it is so pretty as always. I mean, Kaleidos, everything they do is so good. So I'm really excited about this one and they're purple quads. So you know, I am all over it. We've just had so many launches lately that I have not been able to cover it. Okay, already on the lips, you guys. I'm thinking, do I wanna use a lipstick or a lip oil? I think we're gonna go with a lip oil today. I'm going to use the shade Slick Tinted Oil in the shade Marrakesh. Oh my gosh, that's so pretty. I really like their lip oil because I feel like it has a really nice tint to it to where it's not like you're putting on something clear, but it still looks really natural and great on its own. Now, let me turn the lighting up. I'm sorry. I know it's getting dark. The sun is gone. It always wants to rain here when I'm in the middle of filming. Anyways, this is like the super quick look with the Merit stuff. It is totally that clean girl aesthetic and was very easy to do while I was answering these questions. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and continue answering the questions, but I think we're good with makeup. I didn't want to wear anything super heavy today. Where can I find good deals for Tory Burch purses? So I'm no expert on this, but I find the best deals. One, wait for the Tory Burch anniversary sales. They happen a couple times a year. Just keep an eye out on those. I always post when those sales happen. You can get a pretty good deal on those. But also look in Nordstrom Rack will have some good ones. Um, if you can find a Tory Burch outlet, those are decent deals. But the best deals are when they have a sale on top of the sale items. That's when you'll catch the best deal. What do you think is the most overpriced makeup brand? <sighs> I hate to say this because I legitimately really like this brand's products, but I think Shantikai is overpriced. And it hurts me to say that because I'm telling you, Shantikai creates gorgeous products. Pretty much every product that I've tried for them, I've really, really loved. But a lot of times I just do find them to be overpriced for like the amount of product that you get or the packaging that they give you for the price that you pay. So I'm not saying they're not a good brand, but they expensive. How are you liking living in Miami now that you've been there for a while? I was explaining this to my friends the other day. I really like living here. I don't love living here, but I'm very happy here for now. I don't think I'll live here long term, uh, but for the next few years, I'm very happy living here. And while I don't love living here, I still really like it. It is too hot for me. I think I'm going to miss the changing season um, and the roads are a little too crazy for me. <laughs> but my husband loves living here, so that's a huge reason that I am happy to stay here. And then the other is there's a lot more job opportunities for me here. They have a lot more events here for me. Brands will come here. It's not, you know, as popular as, say, moving to LA or New York would be, but 
I, I don't feel the need to go to those events anyways. It takes a lot for me to get up and go to the events here and they're very far and few between. But yeah, I mean, it's really great because the shopping in Miami is amazing. So, you know, we get a lot of the makeup in the stores here that they wouldn't have up in Maryland. And I just have a lot more stores available to me. Like there's a Chanel boutique here, Morphe store, a Glossier store in Miami. There's just a lot of options for me in terms of that. So it's been very, very good for my job as well. So it makes sense to live here. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't love the Florida weather. It's too hot and humid for me. <laughs> I can't stand it. And the drivers here absolutely terrify me. Like everybody here is on such a slow pace of living except on the roads. And I just, it terrifies me to be in a car here. <laughs> I'm not a good driver to begin with, so I definitely don't like driving on these roads. But that's about it. I really like everything else. And the prices, of course, I think are ridiculous. You know what else I don't really love about Miami? And I feel like you guys are you're like gonna argue with me, those of you from Miami. I'm not as into like Latin cuisine. And I know the Latin cuisine here is really, really good. But I, I'm, I grew up Asian. I grew up in an Asian household. I hate the Asian food here. And and it's so overpriced for what you get. The quality is terrible and they make you pay them Miami prices for the food. So yeah, I'm sure the Latin food is great. It's not to my taste palette and the Asian food here is terrible and overpriced. I have not found a good bubble tea here. Mm -mm, you guys, there is no good bubble tea in Miami. No good sushi really either, unless you wanna pay like 20, $25 a roll. And I'm just not gonna do that. I'm a simple girl. I'm a big foodie, so that this matters to me. Do you miss Maryland? I absolutely do, you guys. Now, I lived more in the suburbs of Maryland outside of DC. Ideally, I would like to live somewhere more closer to DC, a little bit more central. I love the walkability of where I live in Miami. Like, I don't think I can give this up. I love being able to walk everywhere. It has improved my quality of life. I miss the Asian food and I miss my parents and I'm sure I will miss changing seasons. <laughs> we'll see, I haven't lived here long enough to tell you that though. And then where do you want to ideally live? I have no clue. I think I want to be a snowbird though, like, I want to live wherever my parents live for half the year and then Florida for the other half of the year, like in the winter, because I'm not gonna lie, when we moved here in February, the weather was perfect. So ideally, I just wanna live where my parents live half the year and then I want to live in Florida the other half of the year. I don't know, we still don't know. We've been trying to figure that out about what is a place that we would absolutely love, love, love to live permanently. I haven't found it yet. What are your thoughts on people saying YouTube is dead? I'm gonna end this video on this because I love this question. I mean, I definitely have my thoughts as somebody who is here behind the scenes. I do not think YouTube is dead. I do not think it is going anywhere. I know the thing is like TikTok is the new, YouTube is the old. I can't tell you what's gonna happen in the future, but the world of social media is ever changing and as a creator, I do need to adapt to those changes. But I think YouTube will always be the standard. Obviously, YouTube is trying to catch up to TikTok because they have the shorts now. But TikTok is also trying to catch up with YouTube because they have the longer form videos. I honestly believe TikTok and YouTube are great platforms that work in harmony with one another. For a while, I remember it was YouTube and Instagram and those really complemented each other. But Instagram is like a TikTok TikTok copycat, which I love Instagram, I really do, but it's no different than TikTok anymore at this point. But anyways, I don't think YouTube is dead. I think that the beauty industry has calmed down a bit just with the changes of the world, you know, because of like something having to do with a worldwide pandemic. So people don't need to wear makeup as much anymore. The economy is in the state that it's in. People don't need to buy makeup. It's not a necessity. So I think a lot of those factors have to do with the fact that people, beauty YouTubers think YouTube is dying but honestly I feel like the only people that feel like YouTube is dying would be the bigger YouTubers because they aren't getting millions and millions of views. No, I mean, as somebody behind the scenes, I, I personally am in 
my highest time of growth. It, it's a lot harder to grow on YouTube now than it ever was. The industry is so saturated, but people are still watching YouTube. I mean, with TikTok, I'm sure it has diluted the viewers of YouTube. I myself, while I still watch both YouTube and TikTok, I find myself spending more time on TikTok just because it's different. It's quick information to take in, but I think there's a lot more value in YouTube and I'm totally biased when I say this. But I'm gonna tell you the differences behind the scenes because finances are always going to run these platforms. So TikTok is great. A lot of brands are putting more budget into TikTok right now than they are YouTube. So that is why your bigger YouTubers are on TikTok now. Budget is going towards TikTok and short form videos right now. That's why they're saying they don't like YouTube as much anymore because the money is telling them to go to TikTok. However, TikTok can be a lot less valuable. It's much more high risk than YouTube. I have more TikTok followers than I do on YouTube, but I have no connection to my TikTok followers. If I recommend a product on TikTok, I make zero dollars from that. Whereas if I recommend a product on YouTube because I have such a strong connection with you guys, you guys are more likely to go out and purchase it. TikTok is a lot more impersonal and you know, there's always people that are the exception, of course. Uh, Michaela, Michaela could recommend a paperclip and we'd all go out and buy it, right? So there always is those great exceptions. But generally speaking, the brands are budgeting towards TikTok because if they have the opportunity to go viral based off that TikTok, it will outweigh the sales on YouTube. YouTube. However, sponsored TikTok toasts get garbage views most of the time. Let's say a good video for me averages 100,000 views on TikTok. If I post a sponsored video, it's dragging to get 1,000 views, <laughs> I swear. And I notice with a lot of other creators on TikTok, people just don't want to watch ads. Whereas on YouTube, because you have more time to watch the person, gain more trust in them, if they recommend a product, you're more likely to go and purchase it. So I think that is something that brands are trying to figure out what's worth it, what's the best thing. The way I view it is TikTok is much more high risk, high reward, and then YouTube is low risk, but it can be a lower reward as well because TikTok, if it goes viral, they're gonna make a ton of sales because the video that they're paying for on YouTube is not going to go viral. But overall, I do not think YouTube is dying. There's just a shift in the industry and that happens and the platforms are going to adjust. And the YouTubers that are saying YouTube is dying, for the most part, I would say are the ones that haven't been as committed to their channels. So their views have gone down anyway and they're not making as much money because the brands are prioritizing TikTok. So that's why I like TikTok better. Just my opinion though. But I can speak as somebody who is a smaller channel. I mean, I don't think YouTube is dead. I don't think it was what it once was in the craze of like, the Dramageddon era, but people weren't even there for the makeup. They were there for the drama. But the people that are generally here for the makeup are always gonna be that base. The people who came into the industry later in terms of viewers were here for the drama, not the makeup. So I've always been a channel that's been about the makeup and not the drama, so I've never been affected by the drama craze. So my views over time have gone, gone up and I have a viewership that I'm very, very happy with. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. TikTok is definitely a force and a threat in this industry but I think it's gonna end up being more so of a relationship like YouTube and Instagram had where they kind of complement each other but we'll see anyways I hope you guys enjoyed sitting down chatting with me and getting a simple quick makeup look again a huge thank you to Merit for sponsoring today's video I will have the link down below to shop their products if you're interested and I will catch you guys in the next one bye guys have a good one Thank <laughs> you.